right, guys, real quick intro to the video that will also have an intro. I have done everything I can to sync up the audio um, with the video on this interview. Uh, because Nathan has to use a VPN when we do our interviews, and um, because there's a, a, a big lag, it has been really hard. And I don't know if it's gonna upload correctly. Uh, in the beginning of the video, you're gonna hear feedback for about 20 seconds. That goes away, don't worry about that. And if towards the end of the video, the mouths aren't matching up with the sounds, sorry. Uh, but the interview was so much fun, I'm not gonna, I can't bring myself to, to scrap it. Um, I've gotta upload it even if it's painful to watch, but I think it'll be okay. But if it's not, you know why, I apologize for that. Uh, we'll try to do better moving forward. Um, here we go. Hi everyone, welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. We're chatting with Nathan Rich again today. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Um, let's just get into it before this thing uh, cuts us off again. Okay. okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. So, did you watch my interview with Gear Iseen? I did. I I did watch it. Uh, it was pretty interesting. He's an interesting guy. It's funny. I've spoken to people since then, who thought that Gear was completely anti-Scientology and others who thought he was completely pro-Scientology. And I don't even mean as a result of watching our interview. I just mean that's what they thought of him. Um, <clears throat> and I guess that's what makes these conversations interesting to me is that he's kind of neither. But it's easy to assume he's anti, uh, like just anti the entire thing because he doesn't believe in any of it anymore and wouldn't suggest other people do it. And it can be easier to easy to assume that he's pro because he uh, feels that he got something out of his time in Scientology. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to him and then talk to others about the interview is because I don't know why it's important to put someone into the bucket of I'm pro, I'm against, as opposed to it's something I did. I have thoughts about it. I no longer do it or believe in it. And people are going to have different thoughts and experiences um, or thoughts and opinions about their experience. Um, I think the first time I interviewed you, I was surprised at, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth here, but how positive you came across about certain aspects of Scientology, um, even though anybody would be insane to characterize you as quote unquote pro Scientology. Um, uh, do you feel you come across as pro Scientology? To some? Me? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, every, <laughs> everybody that knows me, you know, they they, they, they get the feeling from me that um, I, I think that they're, that's, it's not the place to be. Scientology is not the place to be, I think. But um, but I think a lot of that has, has to do with my story. And, you know, much like, um, what's his name? Greer? Gear. Or Gear. Gear, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, Gear. It, sorry, Gear, for calling you Gear. I know that's not your name, but <laughs> nobody could pronounce it right. I'm, I'm sure. Um, you know, I've been watching a lot of uh, Vikings, the show recently, so I, I feel like I'm on his wavelength right now. So I, I get him. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, my look, my story is a, definitely, I think, a deterrent for. Um, Scientology for many people, but I think, you know, like gear, I'm a tech, you know, I have a technical type of mind. I do a lot of technical work, computer related work, I think like him. And so, um, I think that the reason that I can do well with that kind of work is that I don't have to deal with humans as much. And, uh, or at least I didn't have to in the past. And also that, um, it's kind of how my mind has worked. I mean, I, tr I try to analyze things and be very logical and non-emotional about things. And so, um, what was my point? My point is that um, I think that people, when they hear me, they, they probably get a sense that I'm trying to be pretty fair and, and you know, balanced about experience, my experience. And, and um, you know, I don't come off as somebody who's just looking for a reason to hate Scientology and looking for a reason to love Scientology. I just 
I think I come off as who I am, which is just somebody who that's what I believed. And I went through some heavy stuff and I'm not a part of it now. And I, I have a, a really different view of it now that I've been out of it for a long time. And, you know, um, yeah, so I, I think it's just, I, I think people don't feel an agenda when when they hear me talking about stuff because, you know, nothing is all bad. There's there isn't anything. I, I had a little discussion about this, I think, on Twitter or something where I was saying, like, nothing is all bad. Nothing. And they were like, well, what about the Holocaust? I'm like somebody had sex during the World War Two. You know, was that bad? You know, uh, you know, there, there's yes, it was the blackest, darkest period of, of modern history. But it's even that was still not a hundred percent bad in every way, and um, and it's just a it just doesn't exist in this world that we're in. There is nothing that is totally pure evil, and once you kind of come to grips with that that concept, then you realize that everything, every person, everyone, there was there's something about them. There's something about that organization. There's something about Scientology. There's something about, um, you know. Genghis Khan that was good um, and that doesn't mean that everything about them was good or that that they should be followed or liked or whatever it's just a fact of life and and um, so I'm sort of rambling because I just had a delicious banana so I got blood sugar going but uh, yeah I mean my it's interesting that you said that you talk to people that think he's totally like pro Scientology and totally against Scientology I have, I think, maybe a different take on him altogether. Um, my impression from watching that video was a little bit weird. Um, but what did you think of? What do you think about uh, his experience in Scientology and the way that he views it and how he is now? So, you have kind of a classic separation between logic and emotion. Um, <clears throat> I think. Um, uh, I kind of, I mean, I, I generally like his perspective on the time he spent in Scientology in the sense that um, <clears throat> he's taking it in the best possible light, which I think is a positive thing. Uh, now, someone could say, well, it's not positive to be um, just completely out of touch with reality like if someone's like well you could take the worst thing and and spin it so that it was positive but that would be out of touch with reality um i don't think that's what we're i don't think that's gear situation i think gear as an individual did not feel harmed by his involvement in scientology so i'm not sure it's very um logical to expect him to act like he was um, now, I mentioned, I started out by saying the separation, kind of the classical separation between logic and emotion. Um, you know, there were a couple statements he made that, um, well, were just kind of insensitive. <laughs> but that's not necessarily a fault. It's just a characteristic. Um, so, for example, he made the statement about if somebody was raped as a child or disconnected from, they should eventually just get over it. Okay. That sounds like a really insensitive thing to say, but on a certain level, there's also truth to it. The, the, the insensitivity comes from the, uh, um, the appearance that he just, well, he didn't really tackle what it should take for someone to get over it or what it means to get over it. I think what he meant is stop making it the sole primary focus of your life and blaming it for your for your current lot or condition in life. He doesn't, that's how I took it. But again, someone could say, well, you're just taking it the best possible way you could take it. Okay, maybe there's a personality trait where some people just take things the best possible way they could be taken. Gear has sort of processed his time in Scientology in some ways in the best possible way it could be processed. Um, I'm interpreting his statements in sort of the best possible way they could be interpreted. Because shortly after he said, well, get over it. It's not a big deal. Or you have to get over it eventually. Um, I posed to him, well, these things are terrible. Are you saying that because there's war and famine in the world, it shouldn't even be spoken about at all? Disconnection should never be spoken about. 
And he said, no, if it happened to me, I'd be talking about it. You know, if it, it and I was like, well, okay. The second statement kind of um, evened out the first statement, but yet he still made the first statement without clarifying it until prompted. And that's where I go, it doesn't surprise me if people are gonna take that and, or, or see that and go, wow, man, this guy's really insensitive. Well, okay. Or he's just really blunt or, or you know, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now as well. Yeah, um, well, you, you got I, I heard couple. everything he said and I thought, I know what you mean. Therefore, I'm not yeah. offended. Like, I, you know, a, a big part of my story was the disconnection with my brother. And yet he made that statement about, oh, uh, I disconnected from it's not a big deal. First of all, I knew he wasn't talking to me. Um, and I knew he wasn't trying to insult me. And that's also why I, I asked him that question about the show. Like, do you feel the show is contributing in a positive way to this conversation about the ways in which organ, the Church of Scientology is more destructive than your traditional m mainstream religion is to the world at large? And, um, and we couldn't carry on that part of the conversation because he hadn't seen the show. So um, I th I, I've probably answered your question. Yeah, yeah, well, so that's you. You brought up a couple of things. So, so first, first of all, before I even talk about uh, the disconnection thing and sensitive, well, I'll get the sensitivity next. But my just my general impression of him is kind of was kind of interesting to me. The way that I perceived him was was a bit split because I I can see as I'm sure you can too. I still have the power to see things as if I were a Scientologist. Still, I don't know how else to describe that. So from my sort of Scientology lens, what I see is a guy who fell through the cracks and, and like CSs didn't notice that he was not viewing this as the actual reality, but rather a bunch of functional steps to improve his life, which is not what Scientology ultimately is. And so that's why as a CS would probably view that was a auditor mistakes or whatever, and and having him turn out the way he did—that's uh, and that's my kind of how I feel like I would view it if I were still a Scientologist. But and then I also have the lens of an ex-Scientologist, um, and from that, which is my native state, this is how I normally look at things. The way that I see him is that, and this is going to sound weird, but I don't really think he was a Scientologist. I, I don't I don't see that he was actually a Scientologist from what he said. And like I said, I know this is a weird interpretation and I don't mean this in any sort of belittling way, which is maybe how it sounds. I just literally mean what I see is I see a guy who came to something in a smaller org, I guess, and, and was like, this is something that maybe I can use to improve my life. And he got deeper into it and he he said he was all in at some point. Mm. And he he seemed to be approaching it from a how can this be useful to me point of view, and um, and he said he was all in at some point, and I I believe him, so maybe he was what I would consider a Scientologist at that time, but the way that he talks about Scientology now is much more I found use in this and this part you know whatever, but this part was good, and that's not. I mean, that's not how any Scientologist I've ever met thinks, and I'm talking thousands of them. Not one of them ever thinks like that, except for him. And so I think that he, I think that he was is not what I would classically define as a Scientologist. Um, and and I and again, I don't mean to you know, as you, we would say, invalidate what he's saying. I think he's he, weirdly. I think the way he approaches it is actually much more healthy and better than than Scientologists do it because he he wasn't like according you know according to his description of his story he wasn't really indoctrinated with it in the same way that that I was that people I know were I mean I believed that I was a Thetan and that I was from another planet this guy doesn't strike me as somebody who really thinks that you know he strikes me as somebody who's like well, that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but let's do the uh, drills and see if it helps me, you know, uh, which is, again, I think a good way to view it if you want to get if you want to do Scientology. But I also would not call him 
a Scientologist necessarily. Well, see, um, this is one of the places where this conversation gets really interesting because, <clears throat> and this is also one of the issues where people could um, inadvertently talk past each other on this because, uh, and, I, and, and I think I myself might do this sometimes. There's one conversation on what a true dyed in the wool Scientologist is supposed to be at the um, deepest level. And then there's another conversation about what Scientologists actually end up being. And that second conversation is different, um, as we can see in Gear's case, uh, based on whether you're a public, a staff member, or a steward member, um, uh, depending on whether you're getting your auditing at a Class 5 org in the United States or a Sea Org org in the United States or a Class 5 org in the um, middle of Europe or, you know, what it actually means on an individual level to be a Scientologist is going to differ from person to person. Even though like people who were in the Sea Org at INT will all have at the international base, will all have a sort of a common idea of what it means to be a Sea Org member. And people who were on staff at a class five org and never spent time at a, at a Sea Org org will have a common idea of what it means to be a staff member. And a public like gear will have a, a unique idea of what it means to be a Scientologist based on his experience. And so what, um, what do we use to say what it really means to be a Scientologist? What it means to be 100% bought in? But what if 80% of Scientologists aren't 100% bought in? Does that mean what it means to be a Scientologist is that you're 80% bought in? Or does it mean you're 100% bought in? And that's just where it gets interesting because you're going to have different opinions and viewpoints so, w while talking about the same thing, and all of them are completely valid. There's no yeah. right or wrong. Like, like, well, because when you say, well, then he wasn't really a Scientologist. Yes, but if, but if you can be a Scientologist while only being, let's say, an eighty percent Scientologist then is that what it means to be a Scientologist? You only, right. you only have to, on average, be 80% bought in. or And even that could change over the decades. You can get away, you could get away a lot more with, you could get away with a lot more in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s than you could ever get away with now as far as getting away with not being fully bought in. Right, yeah. I, I mean, it's a, <clears throat> you're right, it's not, <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not. Um, it's not that I don't think he was a Scientologist. It's that. It, it's just like you're saying. It's kind of where do you draw the line, right? I mean, it's like this with all religions. It's like with this with all things. It's kind of the old, you know. I have an apple. I take a little piece from it. What do I have? I still have an apple. Well, how many pieces do I take away from it before I don't have an apple anymore? You know, it's this type of question. At some point, you just draw a line and say, well, the, here's what I consider to be an apple. Um, and I think, I guess what I'm trying to say is that my initial reaction to hearing his story was, wow, that's, I actually view him as somebody who kind of got through the crack, like fell through the cracks and got through the whole program without ever truly being a, actually what I consider to be a true believer of it, you know, fully indoctrinated into it. And, you know, who knows, maybe he changed a lot after he got out or, or, or whatever, but I'm kind of just going off of his story. Um, but you're right. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, who's a real Christian? You know, the, if you ask a question like that, it gets really strange. You know, you see a person that says they believe in God. Are they a Christian? Well, they eat shrimp. You know, are they are they still a Christian? Are they a Christian if they, you know, uh, get in a fight with somebody, if they hate someone? You know, it's, it gets really weird. Jesus. Yeah, it's like, uh, I, you know, so it, it's a slippery slope. I, I admit that. Um, but... That was my impression. It was like, okay, this is a really weird dude who's, I like his approach. It's very, um, it's useful. It's, it's logical, but it also is not what, let me put it this way. My family would not have accepted him as a Scientologist if they knew his story at any time. If he ever said anything like, um, oh, I think he was wrong about this and it was actually this way. I mean, they'd be like, squirrel, get him out of here. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so anyway, I, I think it's I also fair to say that, <clears throat> Because he was a public the whole time, um, there's less there's less opportunities. Opportunity is the wrong word. Um, there's sort of less 
gates or check marks um, that a public has to go through. I mean, aside from like OT eligibilities, um, where they basically get sit down and sort of checked over and, and worked over on their, their under, not understanding, their belief, their sort of uh, level of belief on various items. Right. Yeah, like, exactly. If, if, you know, I want to be as specific as possible here and, and not just uh, dismiss him as, oh, he was just the public, because that's not really the case. Let me point out, he did say that he fully believed everything up through um, up through OT3. He said he didn't even start to sort of doubt the body thing thing until, I think, um, late OT4 or somewhere on OT5, possibly. That's an awful long time to continue being a 100% true believer. And, and he hadn't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a long time. Oh yeah, for sure. And if that, if that's true, if that's really, you know, how he felt, then yeah, then I assume he would have been just as, you know, Scientological as, as my, uh, as my family. Right. Oh, but, here's where anyway, I was going with the public cool. thing. Here's where I was going with the public thing. Um, <clears throat> So, I think it's probably fair to say that many public, if they were to start doubting something or whatever, they're much more likely to keep that to themselves, especially if it's someone working up through the OT levels, um, than just like throw every doubt or consideration they have against someone else just to check if this is okay or right or whatever. Like, eventually you self-censor. And so... Even though the majority of public moving up the OT levels and moving up the bridge or at flag or whatever um, might all appear to be 100% bought in, you also have no idea if, if that's just what they're putting out because they know not to advertise um, the points that they think are debatable or the points that they think, oh, I don't really need to believe that. I'll just... I'll just audit the OT3 material and see what happens. Like, you know, it's kind of yeah. like, like, it's just like, that's the exact point you said. We're just, we're, we're repeating each other. It's the no true Scotsman thing. Oh, no true Scientologist would ever not believe that. Well, I don't know. What if 25% of the Scientologists don't believe that and they just don't say it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, uh, the next thing was uh, about sensitivity yeah, I mean, when I the first, I, I I skimmed through it another a second time to kind of refresh before this video. But um, yeah, when he first said, uh, you know, he's like disconnect, you know, you get disconnected, you know, get over it or whatever, you know, he's he's not a sensitive uh, fellow. I'm guilty of that as well. I mean, earlier in a certain video with you and I, I was just uh, talking about how World War II Nazi era wasn't you know a hundred percent all horrible because somebody had once had sex with somebody during that time. Uh, some kid picked a flower, right? That's not particularly sensitive either. But I will say that um, uh, this is the day and age, if there ever was one, where sensitivity is a little bit overrated as long as you're saying something that's uh, that you're, you know, that you're mitigating with rationality. I think he did that. I wasn't offended by what he said. Um, you know, it was obviously the initial like, whoa, what's this guy talking about? And then he continued on. And I, like you, I kind of get what he's saying. He's basically saying, um, hey, if you're out there being a victim of, of your past, get over it. You know, you got to get out there and, you know, pick up a rock and start building something like you, you get over it. And he's, he's obviously, he's reacting to, um, a lot of evidence he's seen of the, that people aren't doing that. And I see it all the time too on TV, a, a lot of, in reality, you know, where people are just going on and on about something that happened to them. And it's like 10 years ago, you know, you know okay, but what does that have to do with now? And I get that. Um, now, I think that having said all that, he, you know, he's like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's been 20 years, get over it. Like I was just talking about. It's easy to say that as you were mentioning when you're not, it's not you. Right. I mean, for me, for example, you somebody might look at my life and say, well, a guy spent uh, seven years homeless and then took another, you know, God knows how long to put his life back together. Jeez, get over it, guy. You know, why don't you just, uh, you know, get your shit together right after it all happened? Well, 
unfortunately for me, it wasn't that that simple. Um, there was a, a a total demotivation. There was, you know, there were drugs involved. There was being underage. There was a lifetime of a seeming lifetime of suffering that ensued. And I can promise you this: it was not to to the best of my you know recollection. It was not me being overly dramatic. I was not being somebody who was trying to play a victim. In fact, for me, I was viewing this as I need to just, you know, get out of this mode of caring and having emotions because these are the things that are destroying me and attacking me. And so that my my efforts were through drugs and partying and escapism. And um, and so, you know, obviously we can't take what he's saying to be specifically about us because he doesn't know our stories. But um, if he were if he said that to me directly, right, if he said, Nathan, you know, uh, you should have gotten over it 10 years ago, or whatever it was, you know, um, you should have just gotten through it, whatever. I would have been like, all right, look, dude, you know, here's here's how it played out. You can tell me things I could have done different scientifically, right? Oh, I could have just uh, done this and, you know, left and went and got a job and wrote, wrote a book. Yeah, okay, but you're you're totally, you know, discounting the fact of, um, emotions and etc. So I'm, I'm rambling as usual, but my point is I wasn't offended by what he said. It was insensitive, but I am often come off as insensitive as well. Um, and so I can't, I can't fault the guy. But if there's anything that I can get from his story about how he views Scientology and the way that he looks at the world is that he's a technical person. And I understand technical people pretty well. He, he's looking at things in the terms of uh, true, false, zeros and ones, physical reality. You know what I'm saying? He's looking for objective realities and objective thoughts. And objectively, yes, you if something bad happens to you, you should ideally just immediately rebound from it and be totally fine. So he's not wrong. Um, so I but I get I, I get how a lot of people can see that as, whoa, what did he just did he just act like disconnection wasn't a big deal? Um, and the other thing is he said, well, you got you know, uh, Islamists bombing people. He didn't say it specifically, but, uh, you know, um, and you got people dying and you got all this stuff. Um, true, but that's kind of a fallacy to me. This this is a this is a fallacy of, you know, I, there's, I'm sure there's some name for it or maybe I'm just making this up, but <clears throat> if, if somebody is, you know, l let me just get a clear example. If you put a tweet out that says, hey, we've really got to save these cats in our neighborhood because they're, you know, they're running around, no, they're homeless cats. And then somebody messages you, hey, you know, there's kids dying in Syria, right? It's like, well, yeah, but you can't just always only care about the number one thing, right? The political left on the, um, in America, they're looking at gun violence, right, as this big issue. Oh, that's really nothing at all compared to people that die from obesity. That is nothing. If you piled up the bodies, you would not even be able to see the gun deaths behind the enormous mountain of people that die from uh, from obesity. But that's not an argument to not care about gun violence. So I kind of don't necessarily agree with his, his um, comparison there. It's like, yeah, okay, well, we're not, like you said, we're not in Saudi Arabia. You know, we're not in the Middle East fighting in the depths of a holy war. We're here where, yeah, life is pretty good. And if we stub our toe, it might upset us. And if we get disconnected, it might take longer than six months to rebound. Um, sure. So those are my, my thoughts on the disconnection thing. Yeah. I also think, and again, um, if someone were to say, well, that I'm just putting the statement in the best possible context, I couldn't really argue with that. I feel that his statement about kind of the get over it or even the statement about there's worse things happening in the world wasn't directed at any one person. Um, it wasn't directed at the show. It wasn't directed. At, I feel like he was reacting to a he has previously observed. And is it a phenomenon uh, that I've observed as well? That out there who aren't trying to have some kind of nuanced, helpful conversation about moving forward or just educating the public on the Scientology experience. They are just out there 
parading themselves as victims that of these terrible, terrible things that happened 20 to 30 years ago. The problem isn't that they're talking about things that happened to them. The problem is how they're framing these things as being the most important and overriding things that are destroying their lives 30 years later. And, and I'm not saying this to put any specific person down or to criticize someone. I think that is what he was reacting to. With, right? Because you've seen this. I've seen this. It's, it's exhausting yeah. knowing what so many people have gone through and knowing how so many people have been able to live happy, productive lives. It is kind of exhausting to see some people still hanging on for dear life to things that happened 20, 30 years ago, as if it's still happening today. So I know what he's talking about, and that's why I assumed that's what he was talking about, which is why I asked him that follow-up question about, well, are you saying this conversation shouldn't be happening? And that, then he said, no, I'm, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. Um, is that how you see it? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's very close. I mean, to me... Every, in all walks of life, in every group, you have people that are, uh, especially on internet communities, uh, you have people that, that that's, you know, they kind of marinate in suffering, their own suffering or other people's suffering. Um, and in real life, you know, there's, you know, I don't know if it's just my, again, insensitivity, but sometimes I'll see like on a TV show, whatever, I'll watch Naked and Afraid where it's like these, you know, people stuck in the woods by themselves and they're like, you know, chopping wood and trying to hunt animals to survive and, they're, and, and everything. It's just like a kind of a nature wildlife show and um, uh, or survival show. And you might have somebody who's like, oh, when I was, a, you know, I can't finish a challenge because, you know, when I was a kid, you know, this thing happened to me. It's, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, you're like 30 now, you know, <laughs> You, you know, pick up some wood and build the fire, you know, and or they don't even talk about it, but you can see that it's affected them. Right. And that's, you know, people might talk to me and find out that I've been affected by my past, but I'm trying to be aware of it. I'm trying to, you know, cope and deal and move forward and, and, and have positivity. I mean, otherwise, I don't want to just, you know, sit around and suffer forever feeling self-pity and um, blame and hatred and I think that I, I don't even think that that really has much to do with Scientology specifically I think that's just a part of the human condition is it's it's sometimes is is in a weird way healing to dwell and it's just unfortunately it's not positive for your for your well-being and so it's, sure. it's, it's by the way your mic that, might be making that buzzing noise a little bit um no. if it's your mic I don't know and uh, the one other comment I wanted to make on this is that there's probably something to be said for what it means to get over it. Um, like, you and I have spent close to 20 hours talking about the subject of Scientology on this channel. And to me, that is not a symptom of not having gotten over it. Um, I enjoy talking about the subject of Scientology, especially answering people's questions. To me, that's not not getting over it. I think not, uh, getting over it doesn't mean... Uh, it, it, it means how doesn't mean never discussing it. How much are you bringing it into the present and still letting it dominate your life as the reason why you can't do things or won't do things or will never accomplish things? The, the, the point that I think the best point to take out of Gear's statement is you need to allow yourself to move forward and succeed despite what has happened in the past. Um, and, uh, and, and keep in mind, here's like a life coach. So of course his whole bent on this is going to be more of that kind of, kind of angle of get over it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say too, that you're, you're, you know, you're, first of all, giving him, giving somebody that you're interviewing a charitable interpretation of what they're saying. Is not something that you should have to justify. I mean, that's what you, you know, look, if you're talking to somebody and they say, uh, you know, something, I, I can't th think of any good examples, but they th say something controversial or it sounds wrong or, hey, is this really what this guy's saying? Um, you can ask to clarify, whatever, but it's, it's, 
weird to assume the worst of somebody to me. It's weird. It's it's and this is I think a pretty rampant culture um, that that's sort of developing is that anytime you say something that's kind of slippery or it could mean something bad, it could mean something neutral, it could maybe even could mean something good. People would try to you know maybe even media outlets are, are guilty of this too. Will try to take the worst possible interpretation of it at, uh, as what you obviously meant, which is a very I think um, weird way to go about interacting with people i mean for sure if you already don't like the guy then why are you talking to him you know and if you if you <laughs> if you are neutral to the guy then why would you assume what he's saying is is negative now i'm not saying that i like that I, I don't know anything about him other than that video but i didn't get anything you know dramatically negative from the guy i just thought he was telling a story it was interesting to me i thought that he was not necessarily what i ha would have called a, a scientologist uh, based on the way he was describing how he thought about things because you know I'm like I said I'm writing in the process of writing this book and so I've been delving deep into the way that I thought about this subject when I was living in Scientology and believe me it was nothing like what he's talking about it was not a oh uh, well you know uh, you know we're not thetans but maybe if, if we think about it that way it might be helpful no it was we are it was very much more religious in, in nature, I guess, more faith-based in nature, or not really faith, more, um, just a more basic part of my beliefs, of our beliefs, than it sounded like he was describing it. And again, in the interest of not being somebody who's, um, you know, uh, uh, telling him what he thinks or says, you know, I, I'm I'm just going off of one video, so I don't know you know, a sure. longer discussion would probably be more, more, uh, illuminating. Sure. Can we try moving the mic slightly away from the computer just to see if the buzzing goes away? Oh. It's like way over here now. Oh. All right. We won't worry about it. <laughs> um, and actually, I don't mean to give a, 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 a an incorrect impression either. The feedback to the video has been remarkably positive. Um, in fact, the only negative feedback I've seen was kind of in, re in response to that specific comment about um, people should just get over it. Um, and of course, he had used an example of a child who had been raped. So you're, he was making a point by making an, using an exaggerated example, which is, of course, going to get an exaggerated reaction. And um, but yeah, and that, you know what? I can't I can't necessarily positive. I can't, I can't really, you know, who am I to really fault him? I do that all the time. You know, I, no. I, I'm always saying the most drastic thing and people get annoyed by it. And I say, look, sorry, I don't know. It's just who I am. I don't know why, you know, and I, I didn't take what he was saying to be um, super inflammatory. I mean, could he have worded it better? Yeah. Well, I could have worded the, you know, Nazi, whatever I was talking about earlier better. Sorry. You know, I'm not a professional speaker. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, but yeah, he seemed like a pretty cool dude. Um, I, I think that, uh, it was interesting hearing him talk about the, the higher levels a little bit. Um, and I'm glad that he's, he's got his life where he wants it. I do, I did get a slight whiff of, um, I'm just gonna say something strange. I don't want to say exactly what it seems like to me, but in the way that he was kind of kept reiterating that anything he does, he gets gains from. That seemed a little weird to me because it's, yeah, okay, sure, but you also get losses from everything you do. I mean, you, it's just you're choosing to pay attention to the gains, and that's a little bit, um, it's not that it's a cop-out. It's just a little bit, not disingenuous. I don't know what, the, what it is I'm trying to say. It just... It seems a little bit like he might be protecting himself from something. I don't Possibly. know how. Else you know, I, I mean, it's interesting that you point out that specific aspect because I, in browsing his blog, there was a sentence there that I remember reading that said something along the lines of, "He's now practicing." I, I realize I'm totally uh, butchering this, and he had this in quotes: "Losing without losses." Which it's yes. exactly like what you're describing right now. Yeah, interesting. 
Yeah, and and that's maybe it's a you know we all have to protect ourselves somehow socially and in our minds. And to me, it seems like maybe a a, a defense mechanism for him of some sort because the fact is, not everything gives you gains, right? It just maybe maybe if you're very positive, maybe most things could, but not everything. Not everything really gives you gains. I'm assuming that you know there's some rule here, and to suggest that everything can give you a gain. Anything you do um, is a, it, I think it's a, it's a mindset and I don't think that it's a real mindset. I don't know how else to explain sure. it. Because if you do promote it that way is I can get gains from everything. Well, on the one hand I go, well, that's very positive of you. But on the other hand you go, well, that means you get gains from sugar pills. So would you encourage someone to take sugar pills to cure their cancer? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, there's value in making a distinction between, okay, the placebo effect and actual effect, and then there's um, something positive about taking the best out of everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot worse ways to look at life. And, again, to be fair to him, um, it's probably pretty weird to have a video and then have a bunch of people dissect everything you've said and not be able to defend yourself on the spot. So I don't want him to feel like I'm, you know, we're, I mean, we're reading far into what he's saying. So hopefully none sure. of this is annoying him. No, but, I, mean, no um, I told him, I said, hey, look, my, one of my goals here is to get dialogue going between and amongst people who may not see things the same way, not for the purpose of, of us all changing each other's minds, but to show the world at large, the Scientology watching world at large, that it is possible for people who do not view their Scientology experience or view Scientology the same way to talk about it without having to um, pick sides or call names or, or whatever. Because that to me is the thing that bothers me most about the former Scientology community. Um, how it tends to split up into sides and teams. That's annoying. I don't understand really. Um, and um, this is not an effort to do anything in uh, regards to gear specifically. Um, it's, a, it's why I, I interviewed gear and then I messaged you and I said, hey, watch my interview with gear. Note down anything you think uh, is worth sort of debating on the subject and then let's talk about it. And I did the same thing to Chris Shelton and we're going to do an interview about it later today as well. Um, and, and the thing is, here's what is kind of funny, is that I didn't really disagree with gear. I don't really disagree with you, and I don't really disagree with Chris. So I'm wondering if we're if this experiment's actually going to work. <laughs> but I think, I, but but even though I feel that I'm relatively on the same page with the three of you guys, I think Scientology watchers would think that we're not. And so I think these conversations are are helpful in the sense of showing. You can be on the same page on some stuff and not on the same page as other stuff. And then at the end of the day, I still feel like I'm on the same page. Because you, you don't have to be in lockstep with someone 100% in order to just know where they're coming from and not have a big problem with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, well, you know, when it comes to former Scientologists, ex-Scientology people, or, or even just people interested in it, um, you, you have passionate people. You have people with a history. You have people that feel like they were wronged or people that strongly feel like they weren't wronged or, you know, whatever it is. They have they have passion and emotions and they um, and they have a lot to say. And it tends to be especially again, especially with the Internet, it tends to be that people are very uh, clingy to what they really think is the way that everyone should be viewing things. And by the way, whenever you meet these people in person, it's a lot of that dissolves, you know, exactly. a lot of this, they're way cooler, you know, um, they're way more yeah. rational because the thing is, and this is what I've talked about before with you is that this long format of conversation is just the only way to do it. This is the way that we're going to move forward with the internet. These little tweets and little things, I just use it to just say snappy little things and, you know, people get annoyed. I don't really care. I'm just, you know, bored. But when you actually have a, a conversation, I think that's how you can Find out, and I think I literally think if you found the most sort of, uh, uh, you know, by the book, Scientology the hater out there, and got them in a conversation, uh, I think you would you would not you personally, but I think people would be surprised to find oh, 
hey, this person is actually pretty rational and normal and cool. You know, it's just they just sort of come off that way. Um, it's kind of like that, uh, kind of like that Alonzo guy. You know, I read his tweets and he clearly has a big problem with Mike Rinder and is to some to some extent you and to all these other people. But then I watch his videos. I'm like, the guy's just kind of like some funny little dude. Like he just seems like a dude I would get a beer with and hang out with. But then you see him online, and you could you could see why people might really not like him. You know, so uh, we all have this sort of online persona that's become natural for us to have. That's probably you know probably different than who we really are. And uh, and so I think a lot of it comes from that. But I do want to talk about one other thing with gear. You said earlier something that made me feel like maybe I was wrong about this, but I thought that I remember that he said he does recommend people occasionally to go and do Scientology at the actual Church of Scientology. I did not hear him say at the actual Church of Scientology. I think he probably referred someone to get some auditing from an independent Scientologist. Okay. So I was going to say, and that wasn't clear to me, I thought he did say that, but I will say that if he is doing that, then I would find that very strange. I would find it very weird that if he uh, thinks that they're doing, you know, some harm in the world, <clears throat> that he should be referring people to them. Now, controversially, uh, I actually think if he's referring them to independent Scientologists, yeah, good, great, you know, who cares? If, they, if it helps them, sure. But I think the organization of Scientology has a lot of issues and is the for the most part the cause of a lot of the problems that that former Scientologists have had, uh, especially my you know myself. I don't want to speak for too many people, but um, you know, look, if you sit in the room and you have an e meter and you're talking to yourself about thetans, what damage are you doing to yourself? I don't know. You could argue some psychological damage. You could argue that you this or that or the other thing, but it's not really objective damage that's very clearly uh, evidenced. But disconnection, you know, charging tons of money, obfuscating the truth, uh, all the kinds of stuff that they get into, cover-ups and molestation cover-ups and the stuff that they do, that's actual stuff that is quantifiable and bad. And supporting that organization, I think, is, is actually not right. So if yeah, he is doing that, doing that, I, I, I wouldn't be that. happy. Um, but like I said, independence, I don't, you know, who cares? It's like... To me, it's just you doing some stuff. I don't care what you're doing. You know, I don't care that it's from Ellen Hubbard. And the way that he discussed, uh, er, talked about Ellen Hubbard, I thought was really interesting. I find it interesting that he thought or he thinks that the sort of real OT8 would have been um, owning up to all of your past stuff and specifically not attributing it to other Thetans, but in fact owning up, you know, taking response, that whole thing. I thought that was pretty interesting. And the weird thing is, as he was saying it, I was thinking, that does seem to be more in line with Scientology up until then. You know, there's not really a, por a part of Scientology that I've ever heard of that tells you that, oh, it's actually somebody else's responsibility, ever, in any way. I mean, the whole entire message is it's all your responsibility, your credit, your fault, your everything the entire time. And it is kind of surprising <clears throat> that... The way he, I mean, I, I already knew what OT8 was this whole time, but the way he describes it, I'm like, wow, that is right. That is kind of a total opposite of everything until then. Right. You know? So we've got about 20 minutes um, before I've got to jump. But let me ask you this, though. What did you think about uh, the part of the conversation of does Scientology have to be a cult or a religion? Can it be a cult and a religion? What would make it a cult? What would make it a religion? What would not make it? What do you think about that part of the conversation? Well, I think he was he was both right and sort of dodging the 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 real question which he clearly understood. Um, <clears throat> obviously, yes, you are uh, uh, able to be a cult and a religion, of course, but that fact by itself is not, I don't think, relevant. I think the the question is, um, you know, I, I think the fact is, it is a cult because of X, Y, and Z, and it. It, it, he may be saying it's a religion because of you know A, B, and C. To me, I don't really consider it a religion. Um, and there's and I have I have reasons for this. Um, and I'll get to those in a second. But I do consider it a cult because, um, and I think cult is more of a behavior thing. 
and I think religion is more of a scripture thing. So, um, for example, I would say that currently, in, at least in America, I would say that uh, Christianity is a religion, it's not a cult. But I, the, the reason I say that is because the texts are very religious in nature, right? They're based on faith, they're based on accepting things that are unknowable, they're based on putting your faith into, you're putting your trust into things which you cannot know, which are better and bigger and, and more powerful than any of us. And that, I think, is something that almost every uh, religion has. Um, not all of them, but, you know, this type of thing is pretty common in religions. And then I think that you could define, a, or the, the way that I would define a cult is actually, and he kind of alludes to this when he says, like, oh, this, some soccer team is like a cult. It's the behavior he's talking about. It's not the the beliefs. They believe that their team is the best. That's not a religion. And so, yes, it can be both. But um, I don't think it is both. I think it's a cult in the way that they act. And I don't think it's a religion because it is, number one, it specifically is professing, in not in their PR campaigns, but in the text. It specifically is not describing a religion. It's describing science it's saying this is this is the this is the uber science this is the science of the things that you can't see because you're locked into the physical reality here's what happens next it's forecasting what science will discover whereas well, religion is not no trying to do that dianetics is written in a way to portray itself as a science do you feel scientology is also written in a way that portrays itself as a science Absolutely. Yeah, I, that's that was the entire the entire uh, experience for me was specifically, no, no, you don't ever believe anything. We'll show you the evidence. This is the evidence and the proof that for this sure. is a thing. For and sure. the thing about the thing about if you talk like I've had some pretty uh, intellectual Christian friends that, that I've worked with and talked to. Um, my friend Giff Ransom is, is one such. And, you know, I've never been a Christian, so it was very interesting to, to me to talk to him about things. But in the end, Christianity always comes down to belief. They just they have many, many arguments, and they, they search for evidence to support their belief. But the, at the end of the, the conversation, it's just what they believe. They believe it. They see it, and they believe it. Whereas with Scientology, it's don't believe anything. We are showing you this step leads to that. You see ARC triangle. You want here's evidence. Go outside and talk to somebody and see their reality rise. Okay. It's it so comes in. off as let practical science. I can't, I can't help it. I can't help it. This is this is one of those things where we can both be looking at the same thing and be talking about the same thing and be saying different stuff, and, and but not necessarily me and you. A Scientologist and a non-Scientologist, or okay, here's what I, here's where I'm going. Scientologist, and I'm speaking from firsthand experience of, of how I would viewed myself when I was in Scientology, have absolutely convinced themselves that everything they believe about Scientology is empir empirically based. But when you get distance from it, you realize. That is actually part, and I don't use the word brainwashing, that is part of the conditioning. You have been conditioned every step of the way to believe that you're not just believing. Because when you look at it, and I, and I think if someone looks at it, they could conclude that everything they came to believe about Thetans, the reactive mind, your case, evil body thetans, all of your gains in Scientology requires so much faith. <laughs> it's just that every step of the way you're being given little nuggets to justify your faith. Whereas a Christian is just as convinced that what they have faith in is also factual as a Scientologist does but a Christian's been conditioned to call it faith and a Scientologist has been conditioned not to 
a, a Christian might say, if you were to challenge them on the existence of heaven or hell, they might fall back on, hey, it's just what I believe. It's just my faith. Yes, but you also believe it to be a fact. It is not just your opinion. You don't think it's just your opinion. You believe it's a fact. Well, Scientologists also believe that what, what their view of the world is a fact. They just don't call it faith. And not just for PR purposes. They've been so conditioned, they don't recognize the aspects of Scientology that are purely faith. What do you think about that? Well, uh, I agree, but we're using some slippery terms that are that can confuse it. I think when we like when I say believe, I'm using I'm using it in this sort of common sense of the thing that you think is true. I'm not necessarily saying without evidence. Whereas if you say a belief, it can mean either way. So I try not to necessarily use that in this context. But um, I agree with what you're saying. But a Christian However, would argue, depending on who they're, who you're talking to, that they do have evidence of a God and a heaven and a hell. They would say, yeah, we have that. I have evidence. Just like, just like a Scientologist thinks that their memories, their, ima their imaginations about previous lives is evidence. I, I mean, are we talking past each other here? You no, know, I, I, you're right. I agree. But what's behind that evidence is slightly different to me because, you know, yes, okay, I believe in heaven, I believe in hell. Where's the evidence for that? Well, there isn't evidence for that. There is no evidence for heaven. In fact, there is the complete inverse of evidence for that, right? You go up into the sky and you only see the sky. And so then they just move it and they say, well, maybe it's another dimension. Or They don't even say that now. They just Someone say... Someone tells a story about um, dying on the operating table and going into the pearly gates and seeing everyone. And those stories help people. Those stories serve as evidence to some Christians just as your... Uh, um, imaginary memories and auditing serve as evidence of the whole track. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm not saying that Christians don't feel that they have evidence for things. What I'm saying is they don't, they don't present this evidence as scientific evidence. They don't say science is proving Christianity. And, and you know, there's so many Christians. I'm sure somebody's saying this, but in general, the ones that I've spoken with. Don't say things like, um, because science has proven this, therefore this part of the Bible is correct. That's what I'm saying. They don't take this physical reality anymore and say, because this happened, that therefore proves this precept of God. There's they take things from the, do that. like, you mean like creationists, those types of people? Uh, I've seen um, a whole. I've seen an entire effort to physically prove that Noah's Ark occurred, the Noah's Ark incident occurred, or <clears throat> various things like. But, no, no, no. But that—that's proving my point, though. That they're they're starting from the belief that the Bible is correct, and then they're seeking out evidence. Isn't that what Scientologists do? They start with the belief oh. that what L. Ron Hubbard said is true. And then they backfill in the evidence to support that. No, I don't think so. If you start the introductory courses, it's not, you don't get hit slammed with the Scientology is the only way to do everything. It's all totally true. Now let's explore the, this new truth. You get hit with these little nuggets of, oh, communication leads to this. And this, and so here's some evidence for that. And here's a piece of that. Close your eyes, get a picture of a cat. Oh, who's looking at the cat? Here's some evidence. It's obviously written in a way that is, of course, coming from we have this stable truth and let's pull you into it. But the way that it professes it, it, its teachings to others, I argue, is inverse of, of religion. And oh, I, I think it, I agree with that. Yeah, um, I still feel, like we're, saying this, I still feel like we're saying the same thing in different ways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a different way to see the same thing. But well, I, I think it's, that, yeah, it's, my point was that even though what you just pointed out, that the the introduction to Scientology is done in a way that pretends to be very evidence-based. And my only point is that that causes Scientologists to eventually be totally blind to the fact that almost everything they're doing requires a lot of faith. Um, they've been con yeah. convinced 
that faith plays no part in this, when in fact it very much does the way I would. Oh, I, I agree. I agree. I have a lot to say about how these small faith jumps are different than uh, – and, and there is faith there. It's, it's, it's just that I'm saying it's not faith-based. In other words, the, the way that it's presenting itself is not, you should have faith in this. It's more like, you shouldn't have faith, buddy. Here's the fact, the fact, the fact, the fact, and therefore this ridiculous. <clears throat> Totally true. And and the second thing there is that um, is that uh, yeah so they're I mean they're coming from a position of you know as you see it they're coming from a position of here's all the facts that slowly line up and now we're revealing this truth to you that you have explored the science of and now are getting to whereas uh, I would say religious people will just tell you the truth right out right out the gate. Hey, what's the truth? Jesus is Lord. God is up there. Mother Mary, you know, they just tell you flat out what the truth is, and then they'll help you find evidence for it. Whereas I would, I would posit that Scientology just does the total inverse, where they try to present a ton of, of, of what they consider to be actual scientific evidence first to slowly lead up to you. And maybe that's just a different in approach for, for new members, but... Sure, sure. Um, and the second part about why I don't necessarily consider it a religion is, is I think, equally strong in my mind, is that it has no sense of a higher power at all. Like, even if you say, oh, the eighth dynamic. Yeah, but you and I both know no one gives a shit about the eighth dynamic. No one cares about the eighth dynamic. It's the seventh dynamic, and that is Scientology, which is you. You are the seventh dynamic. So... There is no, like, even the sense of greater, like, oh, the greater group and mankind, that still is just Scientology. So it itself is sort of the divine being, if there was one. Sure. But there is one. Not even L. Ron Hubbard. They discourage, right, in, and this is something people don't talk about that much, that they discourage any kind of likening um, L. Ron Hubbard to a deity. They don't like it. You don't do that. No, he was a man, and he came, and he did all this stuff. There is no higher power or higher being. It's just you. And that is, um, I think that that is, is, is somewhat of a damning argument against that it would be what, at least what we normally would define as a religion. Now, Buddhism, you might say, uh, is similar. But the thing is this, that people don't talk about that much. I live in Asia. Believe me when I say people view the Buddha as a god. They do not believe he, he was some guy who came down and was this cool dude who helped everybody, right? He was a deity. Um, and so that's a, a, a something really missing that I think... Do Buddhists view him that way? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, dude, they they pray to him. They pray they uh, all the time. There's millions of people around me praying to Buddha every day. You know, it's it's they pray to him. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, and... So he, he, what makes, I think one of the things that's required to have a more, uh, a deeper conversation on whether Scientology is or is not a religion. Uh, I get ner nervous every time I say that sentence, knowing how I'm going to be misunderstood. I don't really have a dog in the fight. I don't actually give a shit whether Scientology is a religion or not. But where I'm going with this is in order to have a, a, a better conversation about it, it requires understanding whether the person you're talking to also considers various other things to be or not be religion. Like, right. let's talk about the Mormon church. I'm sorry. The story of the creation of Mormonism, to me, is just as stupid or crazy as the story of L. Ron Hubbard creating Scientology. So for me, again, I go, I don't care whether Scientology is or is not a religion. But if someone wants to ask me the question, I'm not just going to go for the easy applause and say, no, because it's terrible and it destroys people's lives. That's a true statement. I don't think that has anything to do with the conversation of whether something is or is not a religion. That would just be going for the easy applause. Tell me why Mormonism is a religion or is not a religion so we can compare it to the conversation of whether Scientology is or is not a religion. And But I don't want to talk about Mormonism right now. I want to ask you this one question. Oh, okay. What do you think is the correct description? Because we can agree right now. I think we do agree. Any religion can be a cult. Anything can be a cult. What, how would you characterize, but, but usually something is a cult and something else. If we, if we say that Scientologists um, do genuinely and sincerely believe that we are all immortal, spiritual, um, 
uh, uh, beings with infinite godlike potential, and that auditing is a, a, it's a sincerely held belief that auditing is the spiritual counseling process whereby we will all retain our native godlike state. And if we ignore the fact that that's complete horseshit, <laughs> and we just concentrate on the fact that it is what they sincerely believe, then what would you call it in addition to calling it a cult? Do you just call it a spiritual philosophy? Do you just call it, um, what do you call it? I call it a corporation. <laughs> Tony Robbins on steroids? <laughs> Honestly, that's why. But okay, so look, here's my thing. I just went to bing.com because Google's doesn't work here. And I just typed in the word religion. And this is what it says. The belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. So to me, I would say, no, not really. I mean, maybe like 1%. You could sort of say, well, you are your own god, but they don't talk about it that way. They don't describe it that way. They don't think about it that way. There is no superhuman controlling power that we're worshiping. In fact, there is no worship. And then the second right. thing that it gives is a particular system of faith and worship. No, well, scientists don't definition. worship. I mean, huh? if these were the definitions that we would go by, this conversation would be open and closed. I think these are shitty definitions. And the third one is a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance, which is obviously just the, like, consumerism is the new religion, which obviously doesn't mean anything. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, and, but Wikipedia's first line is there is no scholarly consensus over what precisely constitutes a religion. So the fact is you can right. pretty much call any kind of belief or religion. So I don't care if people call it a religion. I don't get offended or anything. Well, I personally don't consider it a religion. That's the thing. My, my whole goal in the whole conversation of is it or is not a religion is I want to be able to settle on some sort of intellectually consistent reason on why it is or it isn't. And I don't actually care where it falls down in the conversation as long as I can see it's intellectually consistent. And I feel that most of the reasons I hear for why Scientology isn't also apply to other things that people generally think are religion. Yeah, no, I got you. I mean, the way I, I look at it the same way you do. I don't really, it, it, this is just pedantics. It really doesn't it's matter true. if it's, it's religion true. or not. It's true. It really means now, nothing. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm just keep looking at the time. The one thing for me that is the strongest argument against it not being a religion and i say this knowing that i'm not even really sure this factors into the definition this is more of an emotional thing is that i do not believe the church of scientology provide any benefit to society at large and, and what i mean is not that um like let's compare it to tony robbins yeah yeah there's people who read tony robbins book and go oh my god that really helped me that doesn't make Tony Robbins ism a religion. Tony Robbins ology is not a religion just because people feel helped by it. I mean society at large. Um, the fact that other religions are going out and trying to help the underprivileged, trying to bring people up, trying to spread a message of of peace and love, whether whether that has succeeded historically or not, I don't not interested in that. The fact that um, there is a an undercurrent in those other groups of helping lift people up and helping the disadvantaged for me is religious and i could be totally wrong in that scientology does not have a shred of that scientology does not want to help the underprivileged they think those guys are a drain on society and and for me that's the biggest argument against it being a religion but in a different conversation, I'd also be saying it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, go against anything that you're throwing my way. But I would, t I, to me, that's totally irrelevant. And I would just discount it immediately. I mean, to me, you could say I'm a Satanist. I literally believe that Satan is the holy, you know, whatever. And I might argue, well, you're really just a Christian that's confused. But 
I wouldn't say that that if you were serious and you really really believed it, I would say okay, that sounds like a religion to me. But I wouldn't. I mean, for the purposes of defining if it was a religion or not, I wouldn't care if you were helping or hurting anyone. I, I don't think it's relevant at all. But I know then what I'll, you mean. Then I'll just throw back at you there that those are the most consistent arguments that I hear against Scientology being a religion is breaking apart families, charging people money. And I go, okay, many people give a hell of a lot more money through tithing than Scientologists give to Scientology. Uh, disconnection. So, I mean, I hear a lot of strong emotional arguments. I just don't hear arguments that for me, I go, I go, I don't think that has anything to do with the definition. Yeah, I don't have a lot of strong emotions that much in general anymore, so I don't tend to make those types of arguments, but I understand them. Um, but no, I mean, when I hear that, I think, well, that's, you're not, you don't want it to be your religion. You want it to be gone. I understand that. But uh, look, Scientology charges money, basically, and the way that they do that is they, you know, they obfuscate their beliefs, let's say, and they, the whole time you're paying for stuff, you don't even really know what the whole thing's about. And I think that's totally unethical. I think it's totally disgusting. I think it's uh, horrible. I think a lot of stuff that they do is just awful. And, um, and I definitely think that even, here's the thing, even if they weren't awful, I still would think that they're a cult because of the other things, the way that they are about the public and each other, that's, it's actually very culty. Right. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but the thing is, for me, the, the, the fact is, um, because they do not believe in a higher power, I think, Let me put it this way. It makes them more different, you know, different to more religions than it makes them similar to. I'll, 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 that's the most I can give you. So maybe they are a religion because it is seems to be a pretty wide open uh, definition. But if they are a religion, they're definitely not um, a, a normal religion. They're definitely not what normal people would sort of associate as being a religion. Um, and of course, they try their damnedest to pretend like they are. They, oh, the eighth dynamic, that's the God dynamic. I'm like, that's the, that's the dynamic that you're replacing the concept of God with. That's not the dynamic that you're saying is a God. And we don't pray to it. And we don't have ceremonies. I mean, they just invent these ceremonies. You know, like, oh, Scientology minister will, you know, they, they just, they're faking most of that. And, um, and even that isn't an argument that they're, that they're not a religion. I mean, just because you fake it doesn't mean that you aren't. Um, but however... I still would say I would come down as they're, they're, they're slightly, they haven't quite made the mark, I think. Um, now, I used to think that they were religion, um, but weirdly, I didn't consider them a religion when I was in Scientology. <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't think, like, I'm a religious person. <laughs> what is it afterwards that made you think that it was? Probably listening to uh, Sam Harris when he first was becoming popular. I was listening a lot about him talk about Christianity and beliefs and and uh, Islam and thoughts and how we think about things and whatever. And I started to realize, like, gosh, a lot of the stuff he's talking about sounds like Scientology. It sounds like um, that type of thinking where you get indoctrinated. And so there is definitely, you know, there's a religious aspect to it. I just don't think it's enough. I think there, there's so many pieces missing from the apple now. I wouldn't consider an apple anymore. I like that enough. I just consider it a, a bunch of pieces of apple, you know? So is for you the biggest kicker there um, the lack of belief in a higher power greater than yourself? It is not. No. I, okay. I'm just stressing that more no, with that's you. That's not the kicker? That, that seemed to be the one that you took a little more than the previous one. But to me, the biggest, the biggest condemnation of it being a religion, the, that idea, would be that it, number one, thinks of itself as a science. Oh, and oh, number oh, 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 oh. Presents itself as a science oh, and, okay. and, 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 and so on. I, 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 that resonates with me stronger than the higher being thing, but I, because we debated that so much, I just pretended like the other one was more No, important. no, you're right, because I, I had a hard time... Um... I had a hard time agreeing with the science part of it. 
Well, I think the reason is because you're looking at it from this point of view. You're going, okay, I, correct me if I'm wrong. You're going, okay, you get a picture of a cat in your mind, your eyes are closed, who's looking at that? Okay, it's you, the Satan. Well, that's faith. That's not science. You haven't proven it. And I and and there's a lot of those things, and I totally agree with you that those are bits of faith. But what I'm not I'm not saying I'm not trying to answer the question of is a science Scientologist a religious person. I'm trying to answer the question of is Scientology a religion? Sure. And Scientology the 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 texts of it. L. Ron Hubbard does not talk about being a religion no. like that. He, he says this is a fact. This proves this. I've done the research. I've You're gotten right. in the labs, no, and here's how. Totally right. The whole way he's writing all about Scientology, he's always talking about his research in in a ve as if he's putting this stuff through the research and discovery department. <laughs> Rigorous double blind studies. Just don't ask for the results. Believe me, they so, happened. Let me ask you this: um, Do you feel applied? religious philosophy is an accurate phrase scientology uses that to describe itself and again it's combining philosophy and religion in one phrase there do you feel applied philosophy applies to what scientologists are doing to each other well uh if i'm being honest i i think applied religious philosophy i'm i'm a lot more okay accepting that than i am religion even though it sounds like they're saying it's a religion they're not really actually saying that necessarily they're kind of saying it's of the style of a religion and it's based on philosophy now i totally agree there's a deep and rich philosophical outlook inside of scientology that's that's worthy of exploring for anybody interested i don't uh, agree with a lot of it but it's it's fascinating that their whole philo philosophy on what reality is I think it's, if you're saying, is it a philosophy? Yeah, it is. Is it applied philosophy? Uh, yeah, I agree there. And is it religious applied, uh, an applied religious philosophy? I'm getting a little bit, you know, spider senses, but I would say I'm, a, I'm kind of okay accepting that description. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> and again, for me, where I'm looking, uh, I guess the, the one thing I'm standing on that I'm, still sort of waiting for someone to knock me off of this is that the fact that the philosophy of Scientology does sincerely believe in an immortal godlike soul or spirit and that auditing is the way they believe to get that spirit back to be godlike I, I, I hold on to that little kernel and I go I think that's religion and I and I and I'm it's a more of a question. I'm more throwing a question out into the world of going, somebody explain to me why that's not religion. Even if you wrap that up in a bunch of bullshit and sales and marketing and coercion and human trafficking, I go, okay, I get it. That shit's terrible. But does this kernel of belief make this a religion? And I understand the world goes, no. And I go, okay. <laughs> But tell me why. <laughs> tell me why. <laughs> okay. I I, I can... I'm willing to have my I'm willing to have my mind changed. I just go, that sounds very religious. Even if the guy who came up with the idea was just making it up, that's fine. He now has followers who believe it. <laughs> yeah. And we well, I think that it... conversation right now. I was just saying that's the kernel for me. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I mean I get what you're saying. I think it again, this comes down to sort of what you consider religion. If you're saying belief in the in the supernatural and uh and so on constitutes a religion well then sure but i when you said that i the first thing i thought of was those ghost hunters on tv right they see it they go see a ghost and they what they go talk to it and exercise it from the house or whatever it is that they do uh, they probably don't believe any of that but if they did believe it would that be a religion it i don't i don't think so but i, I but but if you have a ghost hunter and so they do believe in ghosts, which means they do believe in spirits. I would love to ask those guys what their religious beliefs are. They have to they have to ascribe to some religion if they believe in in disembodied spirits, right? Um, but we won't know until we ask them. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not me. I believe that there was a movie called Ghostbusters. I, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, this has been fun. Um, yeah, we gotta catch up more often. Yeah, I like this new format. Let's see how this works once um, 
I get it all processed. I, hopefully, it's all synced up and whatnot. You're gonna put. You said you're gonna put a pompadour on me, right? In editing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Put your uh, comments or questions in the um, section down below, and maybe we'll take them up in our next video. See ya. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.